Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have you all here, no matter where you're joining us from. I am here in uh, snowy and cold State College, Pennsylvania, and we know many of you are joining from all over the United States. And today we are going to be talking about all things video, how to add video to your marketing mix, but really focusing a lot on how to create video easily, affordably, and get through, get past that barrier of, of getting started. Um, so we're just going to give everybody a couple minutes to sign on. I wanted to um, uh, welcome our partners from FICOM who are here joining us today. And um, this is a joint webinar between FMG and FICOM. And so why don't we take a minute while everyone is joining um, first, just to go over a few housekeeping items, and then we'll all introduce ourselves. So if you are just signing in, the number one question that we get asked after every single live event we do is, will today's presentation be recorded and will I get a copy of the slides? Doesn't matter what we're talking about. That's always question that we, question number one. And the answer is yes and yes. So we will send you all of the collateral, the slides, the recording, everything you need. So if you get distracted um, or you feel like you're taking you know, notes, but you'd like the slides as well, don't worry, those will be sent to you. Um, you can interact with all of us very easily through both the chat and the Q&A box. So um, if you want to send something directly to all of our panelists today, just for us to see, go ahead and put that in the Q&A. Um, the chat should be uh, more of a community type of forum for all of us to be able to interact with. All right, so with all of that, let's go ahead and jump in. And um, first, I think it would be really helpful for you to know who's leading today's workshop. So I think we'll start, and maybe I'll just have everybody introduce themselves. That way you're not just listening to me. So Candace, why don't we start with you? Hi, everyone. I'm calling in from sunny Orange County, so the opposite of you, Sam. And at FICOM, I am the head of our advisor growth marketing. So I've spent my entire career in the RA industry, and I'm passionate about coaching advisors on their marketing and especially video. So really stoked to be here. Awesome. I'm very jealous of your weather and location, but <laughs> very happy to have you here. All right. And uh, who do we got next here? I can go next, Sam. Carolyn. Yep. Yes. Hey. Hi, everyone. I'm Carolyn Dalamole. I'm the VP of Advisor Growth at FICOM. I joined FICOM after seven years at XYPN. So if you recognize me from there, hello. And very excited to be here today. I think video is a powerful, powerful tool, not only for right now, but it's absolutely the way of the future. I think we all saw the power of video really spike a couple of years ago when a lot of business went remote. And I think that change is here to stay. So it feels very relevant to be talking about it today. So, so true. So thank you, ladies from FICOM for, um, you know, in joining us for this partnership. And then from FMG, Susan, why don't you go first? Hi, I'm Susan Theater, and it's nice to see everybody. Um, I am just officially Sam's sidekick. So I'll be <laughs> chiming in. I get the role of like color commentary. And um, we kind of joke, I'm, I'm the one that tries to think about what advisors who aren't experts might ask as Sam, you know, can naturally kind of trend super 401, 301 master's class. So um, I'll it make sure every down to earth. Yeah. What are people yeah. really actually going to do? <laughs> and Susan, everyone is um, up for a big luminary award tonight and, and she's in New York City. So everybody root for Susan. Oh God, no. <laughs> um, we're so proud of you, Susan. And hello, everyone. You've been, I guess I should have introduced myself at the start. I'm Samantha Russell, the chief evangelist here at FMG, and I am very passionate about video. I've been bullish on video and the power that it brings to connect with people more than anything else. That's really what it's all about. And so today we are going to dive in with some really useful and um, just amazing, I think, tactics that you're going to walk away being like, wow, I did not know this. And this is going to make recording video so much easier for me. So before we really dive into some of those tactics, though, we did want to just start by setting the stage about why video can make a big difference. Because what I would hate for you to do is to get all these tactics and get all of these tips and then leave and still not create the video because you're still nervous about it. I'd rather you know why it is so powerful. So 
the best way for me to illustrate this, I could give you a ton of stats about how many hours a day we watch of digital video, which is 147 um, minutes per day, by the way, if, if you were <laughs> wondering, the average person watches 147 minutes of video, uh, digital video per day. That doesn't even include the TV screen. But I think the more powerful thing about why video is so important for business can be illustrated with this simple exercise. So take a look at my screen right now. I'd love to see in the chat how many of these six people do you know? There's no wrong answer. Everybody, all of our panelists can join in the fun and, and say, how many of the people do you know that are on this chart? Is it one? Is it two? Is it zero? Is it four? Anybody gets all six? I'm going to get five stars. Um, so we're seeing lots of lots of twos for the most part. I see some ones, threes. Okay, I'm going to give everybody another second or so, and I'm going to reveal the answers of who is who. So keep the guesses coming. Oh, I, I saw a five. I don't think I've seen a six yet, but I, somebody has a five. Wow. Okay. Ta-da. Big reveal. So the answer is, I bet that almost none of you who you did know one, two, three, or four were the people on the right in that right-hand column. Almost everybody, the people that you did know or you could identify were going to be the people on the left. And that is because the people on the left all utilize video to connect with their audience. So I put who they are there. You can take a look. But I think one of the most interesting things, right, is that the two on the right, these two gentlemen, are, you know, the the, the men, the, the minds, whatever you want to say, behind two of the biggest companies, corporate companies in the United States. And we just aren't familiar with who they are because we don't see them on video a lot. Video has that power to create brand recognition, which is so important, especially in financial services where for all intents and purposes, people are choosing you because of the relationship and because of trust. And how do you convey that? Video is such a powerful way to do that. So Hopefully this little exercise is just a good way to help prove that without me needing to give you a million stats, figures, um, proof points. But I will share just a few in case you know, you're know you here on behalf of trying to convince somebody on your team they need to create video. So the first one I just wanted to share is from the Pew Research Center. This surprises a lot of people. More than any other place online, any other app, any other social media site, YouTube is the most widely used of all the platforms. And you may or may not know that YouTube is also the second largest search engine after mm -hmm. Google, right? So people are going to go to YouTube to look up things like what's the difference between a 401k, uh, I'm sorry, a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA, or how do I change a tire? Or when's the earliest I can... Um, Take social security, right? All of these things are things that people are searching for on YouTube right now. Um, marketers also love video because it really helps them accomplish a lot of goals. So I'm just putting this out there to say, if you are thinking about this again with your marketing cap on, it's not just because consumers love it. We as marketers love it too, because it accomplishes the goals that we have for our business. But this is the part that I think is really most telling. So Google actually asked 12,000 people why they watched what they watched for the last 24 hours. And then they ordered their responses from the most common to the least common. And there's this pattern that really emerged that I think is a huge shift in our culture, right? So the traditional type of content, when we think of video content, has been moving its way down the list. So why does someone watch a video? The fact that it has famous actors is the least important of why someone will watch a video, right? Even if it's on a network or a platform, like it doesn't matter if, you know, your favorite channel is HBO and it's not on HBO. If you like the content, that's what's most important. So these things are moving down in the rankings and what's moving up is content that teaches us something new, that allows us to dig deeper into things we're interested in, and that is relatable to what we're passionate about those three things. So for all of you, this goes to show you don't need, you know, a high quality production budget. You don't need to, you know, be getting the kind of equipment that you are going to, you know, see on TV shows. You just need to take what you already know and communicate it through video. And I think just pausing on this, we'll send out these slides. This is a great one. As you think about topics to do videos on, these are the filters that you want to make sure you're checking the box, whatever you're talking about should do at least 
one of these three things. Teach your ideal prospect customer something new, let them dig deeper into some of their interests or relate to a passion. So it's sort of a good checklist. And I love that because for instance, great example, Susan, um, there is somebody um, called Mrs. Dow Jones. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of her. She has a really <laughs> I great love that. No. Instagram following. Um, check her out because she's creating so much video content that's really relatable. And it's these short form videos, right? Quick hitting things. So she does a great job of always making sure her videos do one of these things. And right now with this huge FTX crypto scandal that's going on, she just created a quick video explaining, dumbing it down, making it really simple to understand what the heck just happened. Who is this Sam guy? How did he get all this money? How did he move the money from FTX to, is it Alameda? How do you say it? Um, I'm going to butcher that wrong, but <laughs> what, what happened basically, right? For people yeah. who are not just involved in this every day. It's interesting. It's trending and the video is blowing up. So Mrs. Dow Jones was her name if you want to uh, check her out. But again, she's not like a crypto expert, but she's just summarizing the news and then basically regurgitating it in a relatable way for people. Okay. And then the last one that I just wanted to show was, you know, there is just, again, to that point of why the kind of video that we all can create is taking over. We are all moving away from these network websites, satellite TV, to watching digital video. If you talk to every generation, the younger they are, the more likely they are to not have regular TV in their home and to just watch things digitally, right? And this is going to become more and more pervasive. I even know, you know, my parents who are almost 70, they don't have regular cable anymore because they have too many of their kids who are in their 20s and 30s saying, cut the cord, this is ridiculously expensive. So this just, again, is another proof point that really the kind of video that consumers want is what you all can create. All right. So now we're going to talk about the good stuff, which you all want to know. All right. You've, you've told me why it's important and what people are drawn to. How the heck do Hello. I get Hello. <laughs> So I, you know, at FICO, we always talk about the new school mindset. This is the CEO, the CEO of United Capital. He doesn't know we use this picture of him, but you can check him out. He's Joe Duran. And I think it's just such a good visual representation. When we think about old school videos, Sam, exactly what you were saying. It was high production, cost a lot of money. You did one and done one video that lived on your website and it was really used to create credibility. So this is our, this is what we look like, very serious, maybe people typing at their, tea, at their keyboard, a little bit of elevator music, but the sense was we wanted to build credibility. And so we've got Joe with his glasses on there looking really, really serious. Same man, same role, but on the right side, we've got him feeling much more approachable, which is how your clients want to feel when they're looking you up online. You want them to feel like you're a human and that there's some you're someone that they can share their money stories with or some of the decisions that they might may have made or their hopes and dreams. So really, when we're thinking about video in this context of right now, it's really this new school frame of reference. So using video as a as a tool to build connection, to, to use human to human language and to show up less like the serious building credibility and more about showing up authentically so that when someone who's watching your video books a meeting with you, either virtually or in person, and they have that live meeting with you, they feel like they already know you because the way you've shown up on video is the way you're actually gonna show up in that meeting. So on our next slide, really, like, what does that mean? So I think I covered a little bit of this, but what's I think what's really most pertinent to today is it's about doing it DIY style. So we're going to cover how you can shoot video with your webcam, with your phone. I know you're a big proponent of it, Sam, and you say you just shot all those videos that you post on social media on your phone. But I think something also to think about is it's not about having just one and done video. It's about thinking about using it in your prospect and client community communications. So it could be in a one-to-one -one function, it could be in a one-to-many function, but how do you supercharge some of those touch points and those communication points? And sometimes like what is going to have a higher impact when you shoot a video, when someone receives that message from you, they feel like they've seen you in person. So thinking about video as a tool 
to now translate, we're all using it in our personal lives, whether we're FaceTiming or sending video messages, just moving it into the business realm and being able to communicate with your prospects and clients in this really human way to continue to build trust. And one question that just came in that I think is a great one is um, someone's asking, does the new school model apply to all age groups? Um, or is this really just, you know, more skewed for younger people? And I'd love to hear what you have to say, uh, Candice, but in my opinion, the idea is that you obviously want to know your audience and what they are, who are you trying to attract? And we're going to show you some examples here, but if you're really used to wearing a suit and that's how you meet with all your clients and that's what they're comfortable with, we're not saying don't wear the suit. You need to know your audience. But as we've seen over the last couple of years, I can count on one hand, the number of people I interact with, um, you know, in financial services who are actually still wearing the suit <laughs> and have, and I think your other point is this, this background and the production value doesn't need to be the CNBC studio feel, but I'd love to hear your take on it. So I think that's absolutely right. So I think about new school as a mindset. So it's really about what is authentic to you. So for example, to Sam's point, if you're someone who goes in and you wear a suit every day and like that's what's authentic to you, do that, right? If in terms of like how you're showing up. And then the second part of it is also, who are you speaking to? So if you're a client and you have a good, pretty good idea of this, if you have the type of clients that expect you to wear a suit, you're going to wear a suit, right? But you might have clients that are the exact opposite, right? If you showed up in a suit, it would be too serious. But applying this to a video framework, it's really about what is authentic to you? What does your ideal client expect from you? And then really not getting bogged down by the idea that it has to be expensive, it has to be high production, and you have to have an expensive crew to actually execute. And knowing that in the new school, it's like what Sam like was showing for all the stats, authenticity trumps production value. The type of content that you create trumps production value. So not getting bogged down and thinking you can't do video unless it's this CNBC style way or that you have to show up in a way that's not authentic to you. And I think I'll just add, you know, um, representing the older crowd here, um, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, I'll just reference one person, Jamie Price, the CEO of Advisor Group, he wears a jacket and a button down, but the, he's lost the tie because it, it feels so much more approachable. So wearing a suit is totally fine. But I think the biggest, I think the biggest message is relax and smile. You know, if you look at that Joe Duran picture, I love those two comparisons. One is just buttoned up in business and, you know, it doesn't look like somebody I want to go have lunch with. The other person looks like, you know, the other picture makes you look like I'd be really comfortable talking to them and I'd love to meet them. So I think just even relaxing and smiling, no matter what you're wearing and showing your personality and, you know, not having it being overproduced is what creates that authenticity. It's not what you wear. I think that's absolutely right. So then if you think about it, I remember when we, I was working at United Capital at the time, they made the conscious decision to remove the ties to have an open plan office, it was really intentional. And what Joe actually told us later was he had more people coming up to him randomly to say, hey, Joe, and talking to him like they knew him once he had kind of made that maneuver. So to your point, it's it's what's authentic to you. And to demonstrate this point, these are the advisors of today showing up on video, right? Really looking different than they did five to 10 years ago. And I think the message is, it's not about sticking to this box or container of what you have to do or what you have to look like, but really identifying what's authentic to you, what's authentic to the type of business that you're creating, and what's an, what's an authentic way to connect with your clients. Because when you're doing it in person, you're already showing up in that way. And so just thinking about taking that and translating it to a digital realm, so video. In this section of really how to get started, once our mindset shift is toward authenticity, not necessarily stressing about production and perfection, um, we want to touch on some of the gear and tech. We will get into this even more as the hour goes on. But two things we're going to cover today are our best, most accessible, budget-friendly, and quality uh, gear options. So 
Shooting from your phone is one thing we'll cover. This is really good for anyone who wants to be on the go. If you want to be changing up where you're filming a lot, it's really easy to take your phone, be it an iPhone or otherwise, and put it on a tripod. You know, carry that around. You can be anywhere. You can go to the park. You can be in your car. I know Sam sometimes records in her car, right? This is very um, mobile friendly because it's your mobile device. Um, but we're also all right now sitting in front of a webcam. Almost, I'm almost certain that everyone here has access to a webcam today. So you can start shooting video today. At FICOM, more than 90% of the videos that we create, and we create a lot, we use our webcam. Um, so this is very accessible. It might already be um, in your office. And it's paired with software, which is our next slide. It can be a powerhouse for a DIY video setup. So we really like Soapbox, which is like by a company called Wistia, and Loom. Both of these have a free version I personally use Loom about every single day. It's just installed on my Chrome browser. I pull it up and I can record a video at the drop of the hat. Um, it's also, these tools are really easy for creating little libraries so you can search and find your videos easily, quickly download them or embed them. So if you don't feel like you have a good system for recording, maybe you only use Zoom right now, I would highly encourage that you check out these two options. Um, the advisors that we work with find that these two are their favorites and they are absolutely favorites of our team as well. And I, I think one thing that's important to say about all these options, I see in the chat, someone's asking about like bomb bomb. I know people have used yeah. Vidyard. There's a lot of options out there. These two, you both have had great experience um, with it. And so have I personally, but also advisors. I think one of the things that's important about all of these, yes, it's easy, but also that you can record both your screen and yourself at the same time. So if you, you know, I had um, my advisor, sometimes if we ask him a question, like we had a question about something to do with HSAs or like a benefit package, and he opened up the file and was like, recording himself right. and recording the screen at the same time. I saw another advisor when there was all this back and forth about PPP loans and like what to do and where to go. He like pulled up the small business administration's website and was showing people, this is where you go. This is where, like how you get to it. Um, and he, you know, posted it on social media, but it was also something he emailed out. And then of course, all his business owner clients were rapidly emailing it to all their friends who wanted to, sure. to get these PPP loans. So these are really great for a recording video where you share your screen too. Yeah. And there was a question in chat from Kristen, like, do you record them on these tech platforms and then put them on YouTube? Yes. So once they're recorded using these tools, you can put them other places. You can put them on FMG. You can be uploading them all to YouTube or certain ones to YouTube, inserting them right into an email you're sending, um, be it in your inbox or FMG to your whole list. So once they're created, then you're able to use them. But um, these are the tools that will help you record really well. I know we're just about, Sam's going to jump into her handy tips for how to record on phone and she does a phenomenal job. And then we'll talk about webinar, but I just want to say that there are so many advisors that come to our video workshops and they follow YouTube influencers and they buy all the fancy gear and lights. And then it just sits in the corner of their office because they don't ever set it up and they don't have the time. So the less barriers you can have to actually creating video, the more likely you're going to be to create video. So also thinking about that in your mindset. And I see a lot of questions about hosting yeah. on YouTube. We're going to talk about YouTube in just a second, um, but quick answers. No, you do not need to post these to YouTube in order to share them on social media. And in fact, often better to just upload the file natively right to social media. Um, the second question about, um, you know, for searchability, should you post on YouTube versus Vimeo? Yes, YouTube is better if you want more people to find it. So hopefully that will help. Okay, keep the questions coming, you guys. And if you have the questions, somebody else here definitely does too. So we love that. Um, and asking them in the chat allows us all to learn from each other. But again, if you want it to be private, you can put it in the, the Q&A box. Okay, so I have shot, I just counted it up the other day, 106, I think today I recorded one, so 107 now, videos on my phone in the last three years. I learned a lot along the way of what not to do. And um, if you look back, if you if you really want a laugh, um, we'll share the link to our YouTube channel. You can look at the very first video that I ever shared. I'm pretty sure you can see straight up my nose. Um, so apologize for that. But 
I've learned a lot along the way. So I want to share with you what I've learned and why the videos are a million times better now to hopefully help you not make the same mistakes that I've made. So the first one is framing your shot. Again, um, cameras have come so far, even in the last three years. So um, if you go into your camera settings, this is all based on my iPhone. Um, but if you search this on whatever phone you have, I'm sure you can find it on the internet very easily. There is a grid built into these cameras now. And if you want to turn it on, it will help you frame your shot to look a lot more professional. So once you're framing it, you want your eyes to be on that top line and your head to be in between the two middle lines. Again, this is for using on your phone. You'll also see that the orientation is horizontal and not vertical. That's gonna allow us to repurpose these videos in all the places you want. So you can upload it to YouTube, you can put it on your website, you can share it on social media without needing to constantly reformat. The only time you're gonna have issues shooting it horizontal horizontally is if you want to um, utilize these for like Instagram stories, or um, that's pretty much the only time. <laughs> I know most of you are not using TikTok, but so that's the only platform. If you're trying to use Instagram too, you would want it in the other orientation. But I know for most of you, this is going to be better. I did get a question. Somebody said, well, if I'm using the grid, you know, how do I see myself if I am using the, the rear facing camera, which is my next tip, right? You should actually be using the rear facing camera, not the selfie camera. So you're not looking at yourself, which is what most of us do. I know I did that for the first 50 some videos that I created. The reason you want to use the rear camera is that the quality is better. So it's going to just give you a crisper, cleaner look for the camera. Um, if when you're first getting started, you feel more comfortable looking at yourself, do it for the first few just to get the hang of it. But then once you're, you get in the flow, flip it around. And so, so when people say like, well, how do I know if I'm in the grid, you need to stage your, your shot. So, you know, you can have somebody stand there and who's the same height as you, you could, you know, center it on a plant in the background and then put your head where the plant is, however you want to do it, but kind of set it up, put some tape on the floor so that you have your shot framed. Um, this is for like, again, when you're doing it hands-free using a tripod. Now, if you're in your car, you might be propping your phone up on the dashboard of your car. And then, um, you know, doing it that way, you're not going to have a chance to use the grid. So again, we need to be flexible here, everybody. The idea is um, when you can follow these tips for the best quality. Again, we've already talked about fancy equipment. I just wanted to point out that so many people ask me about lights. I probably get an email once a week. What light do you use for your video? And even right now, you can see I have really good lighting. I am simply sitting right in front of a video, video, a, a video, video. <laughs> video too much um, window in this room. And the light is coming and framing my face. So the window should never be behind you. You always want to be looking into the window so that that light naturally frames your face. This one is one that every person that I tell has never heard this tip before. So um, if you've never heard it, and you've had problems with quality video, this is probably why. Once you've created a video on your phone, how do you get it to your desktop and have it look nice? That's one of the, you know, again, if we're really starting from scratch using those platforms like Soapbox or Luma is so great because it's already on your desktop. You don't need to transfer it. But if you're going to make it on your phone, you need a way to transfer it. So if you have um, Mac, airdropping it is a really great way to do that. So I've Got a little screenshot here. You're going to, you know, click this little arrow button. And then over here, you can see the airdrop option and you're going to airdrop it to your desktop. But if you don't have a map, um, a Mac, you can use things like Dropbox or Google Drive and transfer it that way. The main thing is you don't want to text or email it because it's going to compress the quality of the video. And then once it is on your desktop, Again, this is from your phone. So if you're using something like Soapbox or Loom, those desktop recording software, there are some built-in editing tools that are pretty simple, but you know you can use those. But if it's coming from your phone, you need a way to edit it. And so I love for editing videos from my phone, a tool called Veed.io. And the reason I love it is it makes it really easy to add subtitles. So I know if you guys are anything like me, I watch a ton of video with the sound off. And most consumers do too. So it makes it really easy to add subtitles. You can see here, it, 
automatically pulls them in. I don't know how it does it. Um, some crazy AI. It just knows what I'm saying. It pulls it in. And then I can click on any word and say, nope, that's wrong and re-enter the word and it will fix it on the screen as well. This is also going to allow you to add text overlays. So if you want to create a really you know, beautiful starting screen that says the title of your video, you can do that indeed. You can add music, you can splice. If you want to get really edit crazy, you can, but also if you're a novice and you just want to add subtitles, you can do that too. Oh, good. Jim is saying, I just started using bead after one of Samantha's recommendations and it's super easy. So don't just take my word for it. You might be thinking she created a hundred videos. Of course she thinks it's easy. No, Jim, <laughs> he just said it's easy. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Um, and this, I'm not going to get too much, spend too much time in it because we have so many tips to share. But again, we'll share these slides with you when you are going into your camera and just looking at the settings. There's actually a lot of different settings these cameras again now have on these phones. So these are just some of my recommendations. These aren't like set in stone. You have to do it, but knowing what all of you are probably going to be doing, which is you want to make it as easy as possible and easy to edit. This is what I recommend. So there's a million different options for how much resolution and then how many frames per second. I suggest 4K at 24. Um, there's also different options for um, HDR video. I suggest toggling that off, which will make it easier to edit after. And then the newest iPhones have this thing. Now you can see this image where it allows you to actually see in the shot outside of the frame that will be captured. I turn that off because in my mind, I don't want to see what's outside the frame and think it's going to be in my video. I'd rather just see what I'm actually capturing. Okay. I know that was a lot of tips um, and I wasn't looking at the Q and A box. Is there any questions we should address? Susan? Yes. I'm just thinking I, a lot of people have asked, should I, you know, you, you record in lots of different places, you know, the car, I've seen people record on the beach, you know, but we're marketing thought leaders, not, you know, advisors. Do you, do you recommend that an advisor change their location, you know, and, and, or do you recommend that they create consistency to have, you know, some brand recognition? Um, so I I'd love to get everybody's, you know, take on this. I, again, think do, if you're just starting, the answer is do what's going to make you make video. So if you only have one spot, then that's where you're going to make the video and you can set it all up and it's your like home studio, then change up, maybe like add a new picture in the background, a new plant, change your shirt, you know, don't be wearing the same thing every single time. But if that's how you feel comfortable getting started, do that. Um, adding some variety once you, if you did want to build, for instance, like a YouTube channel, it can be nice to have different backgrounds. But if you're mostly going to be like emailing them out, posting them on social media, you're not going to pull up one page and see a panel of videos with the same background. Candice, you're nodding your head. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, listen, let's be honest. I mean, Sam is a pro. Okay. So like, she is like, <laughs> she like can shoot it anywhere. Probably we could wake her up in the middle of the night and she could shoot a video like on oh, the go, edit it, and then fall back asleep. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, I think that when you're just getting started, I keep it simple. So I always think about starting in one place. So you're thinking about your prospect and client experience. Where's the one place you can start using video for highest impact? Is it adding video to your newsletter? Is it adding video to your post-client meetups and meetings? Like, what does that look like? So choosing one place. And then in the beginning, to Sam's point, I 100% I agree, you have one setup, start there, and then build your confidence. So be consistent, start to learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you, because I think that's also a key point of the new school mindset, what works for me isn't going to work for Carolyn, Sam or Susan, because we're all different types of people. And our comfort levels with tech is kind of different, how we work is kind of different, but also our personalities. And if we were advisors, our types of clients we serve would probably be different. So find what works for you in terms of keeping it simple and what is going to help you build consistency. And Sam, just one other question that I, I think you're probably going to get to, but I wanted to ask a prelude to it. So I think, you know, advisors are wondering, it's obviously a lot easier to just record on your phone, you know, use Wistia on your, you know, on your desktop or Loom. When would you recommend somebody also setting up the YouTube, you know, because they don't have to have a YouTube channel, but what are the benefits to doing so? And, and should everybody do that or, or just if they're really going to be power users? And then once you answer that, you can maybe touch on this handle thing that just came out. 
Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll stop sharing. I'm, and then I want to show you all because I saw so many questions on like, would I then share a link on LinkedIn or Twitter or do I upload the file? So I'm just going to show you how to do that really fast too, um, live here. So the first thing is, you know, in terms of a YouTube channel, there, in my opinion, is no downside to also adding the videos to YouTube. Again, if you remember, I told you YouTube is the second largest search engine out there. So when we go to YouTube or I'm sorry, to Google and we search for something, there is the chance that your video could show up in the search results. Actually, I'll just show you guys what I mean by that. Cause I think seeing, I don't know about all of you. I'm a really visual learner. Can you all see my screen? We can see it. Okay. So I talk about this thing called zero click content all the time. If you go and you search on Google right now, like what is zero click content? Do you see all these videos that come up? Oh, there's me. You can actually get your video you've created to be pulled in. And so people can stumble across you, even if they're not on YouTube looking for you. So there's just an added what we call SEO search engine optimization benefit to also adding it to YouTube. So that is why I would suggest also adding these videos to YouTube. And it's also a repository. If somebody is wanting to get to know your business and they're looking up all your other you know places online and they see you have a lot of video, they could head over to your YouTube channel and just go down that rabbit hole. I'm sure a lot of you've been there where you start watching content from somebody's YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, handles is a new thing that Google just rolled out and basically don't let it confuse you. You know, when you are, um, okay, I'll pull up Twitter now. So, you know, you guys got me doing live screens here. If you're on like, um, a, a platform like Twitter here and we click on a profile and you see how my handle mm. is at Samantha 20, that's my handle. So even though my name is Samantha Russell, my handle is at Samantha 20 YouTube just rolled out its own version of handle. So, whereas before, Mike here, we're going to show you his YouTube channel in a second. He, under his YouTube channel, would just have like a series of alphanumeric characters and numbers. Now he can easily say on YouTube, I'm at Mike Sung. So YouTube rolled out handles and that's all it is. It's an easy way for people to identify different pages. And then Sam, circling back to your question, you know, the question about YouTube. So I, I, I love Mike because I think he's a phenomenal example. If you look at his YouTube, some of his videos have 300 views. His one on RSU has got, I think, 54,000 views. Mike started just in one place. He used a whiteboard and that's how he would explain things to clients live on a Zoom call. So all of a sudden he thought, well, why don't I actually record videos that I would be doing live? Because he was comfortable with that. So he had that simple backdrop and he started sending that to clients. Then when he felt really confident with that, he launched his YouTube. And to your point, like, which is what I think we all feel when we're starting to make a video, he says, you know, if you look at my original videos, they're kind of embarrassing. I feel the same way about myself when I started making videos, they're horrendous, but you don't let that turn you off because you get better and better. So you start to see Mike's earlier ones, like what, where he started and like his evolution and journey. So such a great comment. Okay. Um, let me just show you this really quickly on, cause somebody was asking, okay, when we get the video, you guys mentioned all this different software, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. So again, when you're getting started, the first thing you're going to do is decide, are you going to record on your desktop, which Candace is going to go more into in one second or your phone. If it's on your desktop and you get a file from Loom or Soapbox or whatever technology you're using, you can save that to your desktop and then upload it to a place like LinkedIn to share. So you would just come to here and where it says start a post, you're going to select a video, select a file, and then it's going to pull that file in. And this is going to be the same process if you record on your phone. So if you record it on your phone and you airdropped it to your um, computer, you can upload it here. If Sam, you we got a question. If you take it on your phone and you're posting from your phone, mm -hmm. can you just attach it or yep. does that lower the quality, as you said, to do the airdrop? So if you are already recording the video on your phone and now you want to post to your social app directly from your phone, you can do that. The Perfect. only time you might want to first airdrop it would be if you want to edit it first. Excellent. Uh, so hopefully that helps answer some of those technical questions. Um, and now we're going to go back to some of the tips that we have. So we just, I gave you all my tips for recording on my phone. Candice is going to give you all of her best tips for shooting from your webcam. Thank you, Sam. I feel like this is such a fun webinar. So I hope everyone else is enjoying it as much as I do. So 
When you're starting out, one of the things you're going to want to do, so Sam covered this in terms of doing it on your phone, but you want to set up a shot that you love. So what is the shot? It's actually the square box that you show up and I'm moving things around my desk because I can show you. This is Paul Sidlansky. You can actually check out his website. He started doing a lot of video, but really what it's about is you want to show yourself in a way that's authentic to you, but that you're also really proud of to put in a public place. So your prospects, look at that and they get a sense of who you are, your level of professionalism and what it would be like to work with you. So I really think about two camera angles when you're thinking about it that are most flattering. And I found this to be true, whether you're DIYing it with, oh, with your webcam or you're actually at a professional shoot. And if you ever get shot, for example, by investment news or someone, you can actually ask them to check your shot and they will let you do that. But the most, the two flattering camera, the two angles that I find are most flattering are when your camera is at eye level or slightly above slanted down. So for example, I like mine above slanted down. That's my current angle. This is what it would look like at eye level. I find that works for a lot of men. This is like what you don't want. And if we remember the beginning of the pandemic a few years ago, all the broadcasters on TV that were used to having a professional film, film crew were showing up on TV like this because they really hadn't contemplated. So not that flattering. It feels like kind of warped. You really want to simulate as if someone is sitting across the table from you, arm length distance, making sure that your torso is at least in the shot and you're not a floating head. If you look at the next slide, it doesn't have to be fancy. Okay. So you, I've seen advisors stack boxes up or printer paper. One advisor was running around his office and he had to be on a webinar. So he wanted to set up his shot and he started, he started stacking printer paper. That's my setup. I've got a stand called Roost because I travel a lot. And so it's really accessible and travel friendly. And I've got it on top of my Mac Air box. And on the right hand corner is actually our CEO's. That's a Bed Bath & Beyond stand that she found. So it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And it's just about the intentionality. So making sure that you set up a shot where you feel really proud of it, checking your backdrop that it looks the way you want it to. I saw a lot of questions about virtual backgrounds. I'm not a big fan of virtual backgrounds. I think they are still have a little bit um, to be desired, the technology, because your head starts to like move into like the simulation and we get a little bit distracted by that. And also you want to create videos where they get a sense of what it would be like to work with you. So if you think about setting up your physical office, which we all do, like you would do for a client coming in, it's really about setting up your digital office. So what does that look like for you and how do you show up in a way on Zoom calls or shooting your videos or whatever that looks like that feels really beautiful for you that you're really proud of? And I will say too, one other thing is there are so many questions about background. You know, I, the first time I ever posted a video of me in the car, I had some of my colleagues saying like, oh, are you testing out a new strategy? Are you trying to see like um, if this will get more clicks? And I really wasn't. I just had something to say. And I it was the middle of the pandemic, the stay at home orders. I had three little kids at home and no quiet space. And my car was literally the only place I could go. But the car did get more views than other backgrounds initially, because it when you think about when you go to social media, I always say we go to social, we scroll without a goal. So you're scrolling and something catches your eye and you stop and pay attention to it. Somebody shooting a video in their car is more likely to be like a friend of yours than a business, like a branded video. So it sticks out more and we pay more attention to it. We scroll right by anything that looks like an ad. And so if you're almost like too corporate looking, sometimes it can get lost on social. Now, I'm not saying that that's true for email or other places, but on social media sharing background, having a different kind of background can be very eye catching. There's also a point to that for, you know, when we're thinking about virtual backdrops, for example, if you're traveling and Susan is because she's in New York, right, but she actually looks really well set up there, you can tell she's got the, the skills and the tips and tricks, but if you're ever in a place where you're shooting a video on the go, and maybe it's noisy, or your lighting is terrible, or whatever it is, we call it naming the elephant in the room. So you just say in the video, hi, I'm like traveling, I'm in a hotel room, the lighting is terrible, which is not the case in Susan's case, but the lighting is terrible, but I want to make a video for you, right? I think that like plays into just being really authentic and quite frankly, real 
versus putting up a digital backdrop, which again, I think has a place. If you have a backdrop that's just, you're like, I can't show this backdrop and you want to put up a virtual one, do that. And in your video, acknowledge why you have the virtual background. It goes into that vein of showing up authentically and building connection. Talking of which, this is a really beautiful example of lighting. This is Greg. He was one of our video rock stars. I mean, he looks like a movie star in the second one, like which is the difference the lighting can be. And I think the note here is lighting is an art. And if you really think about the best lighting, ironically, it's natural light. So I'm in Southern California, so I'm really lucky. And I'll just show you. I've got a huge window in front of me. So can you see that? That's like an ideal scenario that you set yourself up in front of a big window where you can get some really natural light, no windows on the side, and then you can experiment with overhead lighting. I always say if, however, you're, li you're living somewhere where there is seasonality, having that backup lighting is a great idea. Also being intentional again and watching, maybe you have really beautiful light in your office at a certain time of day and then shooting your videos when the lighting's really great. Yeah, I'm a living example of that right now, Candace. I am East Coast, whoever in the call is East Coast. It is pitch black outside. I mean, it is so dark. I have a window right in front of me, but there's a time of day where I have to turn on my handy dandy ring light here, which kind of hurts my <laughs> eyes, but it completely transforms the room. And again, very transportable. So I can bring this around. I could absolutely travel with it. And I find it to be very, it's almost like a security blanket just to have on hand because if natural light isn't so available to me, um, I know I can manufacture it for darker moments in the room. I think this is just a slide to what we've been speaking to throughout this. But if we look at these video rock stars, which is what we call advisors who come out of some of our video workshops, they look different, right? They're all, and really the secret to the people that show up best on video are the people that are showing up as themselves. If you're someone that's really introverted, but you're thoughtful about details and you're a little bit soft-spoken, you're gonna wanna show up like that on video, right? You're not gonna wanna try and be a Candace who's like outspoken and loud. You want to be in a vein that's really authentic to you so that there isn't a disconnect between how you show up on video and how you show up in the real world. It's really about doing what's authentic to you. You want to make it professional, but to Sam had mentioned, not too corporate, right? You want to make it that's really professional for you. And you want to do it in a way that your ideal client expects you to show up, whatever that is. You know what, Candace, just looking at these, if I'm guessing the audience is doing the same, but most of them, at least the ones I can see where the arrow is and all over their face are smiling. And I think the, if, if everybody just focuses on, on looking like they're enjoying doing the video, as opposed to being pained by the process, you know, it, if you look like you're enjoying yourself and just talking to a friend instead of a camera, you'll come off really naturally. And smiling is the easiest way to convey that. Easy way to do that, Susan, think about your favorite client and in your head, speak to them. That's I think about my bed. I'm like, in my head, I say, hi, Kirsten, and think about someone that you really can speak easily to when you're creating your videos, speak to that one person. Awesome. Okay. So we have so many questions. So I'm going to keep this train moving, ladies. Let's talk about the types of videos that advisors can easily record. And then we'll go through this next part kind of quick with some examples. And then I'm going to show you again off the slides in the browser, some of the technical things you're all asking about. Great. So an easy way to think about where you can use video is anywhere you communicate, point blank. It's not just for social media or your website. We're all used to the virtual meeting now. There's virtual meetings. You can be showing up more authentically there. Emails are awesome place to uh, use videos. If, if you are anything like me, you have lots of email. And a lot of them are almost like a chore to open up. But if you open up an email and all of a sudden there's a video smiling back at you, really powerful way to use video. So we can launch into three specific examples for where you should be applying video if you are not already. Um, the first one is that video introduction right on the homepage of your website. This source is actually um, an advisor, real advisor example that you can look at on their website, but it's a go-to. It's a very quick way to almost humanize your website and help people feel like they're getting to know you without even meeting you yet. 
And I believe this is that that is a, an FMG website and we make it super easy. So we'll talk about the how later. Great. Sam, do you want to take this one? Yeah. So the other one, and somebody mentioned this about bios kind of getting stale, like looking too corporate-y. Um, I love the idea of this video bio. So this is an example from Drucker Wealth. Um, he and his son actually operate the firm. They're based in New York and they both have their own sort of niche. So he really focuses on people on the cusp of retirement. His son works with more of like the Henry uh, demographic, but he tells this story about how his dad was a financial advisor and how he grew up around the business and he the clients his father had were like family to him. And then he became friends with a lot of the client's children. And now they're part of this Drucker Wealth, the family. And in this video, he's telling this story, the story of his why for, for the business. But then he also has kind of snapshots throughout the page of old photos of him and his dad growing up. So I love this as, a, again, just a really easy way to use video on your bio page. And then this one, um, this is just anytime, you know, a lot of times people will tell me, oh, I have so much to say about topic X, but it's just finding the time to sit down and write it. So if you're someone who finds recording video to be quicker and easier to put out content, then vlogging might be a great option for you. So a vlog is just a video blog. And what that really means is instead of sitting down and typing out your thoughts on a topic, you create a quick video about it. Somebody did ask about ideal length. There's all different types of lengths of videos for different things. So that intro video, I'll just go back um, on the homepage. These should be like 30 to 60 seconds max. These bio videos about the same length. Um, but these vlog videos can be a little bit longer, right? So you're doing a deep dive on a topic. So you're going to teach someone, educate them. And so for these, it could be anywhere for, you know, from two and a half minutes, you know, up to 10 minutes, depending on the topic. Just be prepared that the longer it is, the more you're going to lose people. So you, people are not going to stay and watch the whole thing on average as long, the longer the video is. And on social media, there are max lengths. So on LinkedIn, I think it's 15 minutes now. Um, Twitter, it's two minutes and 10 seconds. Um, Facebook's about 15 minutes. So there are a cap. So if you want to make one video and use it across all platforms and you are on at Twitter, then it needs to be no longer than two minutes and 10 seconds. So now we're going to show you some of this, how it can translate to YouTube and, and, and show you this in real time. So I'm actually going to pull up these pages. Is this the one we want to start with, ladies? Sure. I think we've got three examples here for different types of advisors really rocking YouTube in different ways. So really, um, I think this one is really interesting, Financial Design Studio, because this team does videos on like a virtual whiteboard. So something really, really different. They have all their different team members creating it and they focus on educational content. So I saw someone had asked at the beginning of this, like if I'm, do, should I batch record? So should I record a whole bunch of videos in one day? If you're recording for something like YouTube, I know that this is what Michelle and her team do. So they record once a quarter, a whole bunch of videos answering their top client questions. So really being educational and then they post them. So I think there's a lot of best practices around YouTube across all the YouTubers that we selected to demonstrate. Carolyn, I know you've coached Michelle a bit. Is there anything else you want to say on their YouTube? Yeah. Michelle comments also, they see a lot of SEO value here on their YouTube. They have been doing it for a while. So SEO is a longer term game most often. They've been doing it since 2017. They have 200 videos, um, but they keep at it because the ROI is there. It's that same feeling of when my leads show up, when they're at the prospect meeting, they feel like they know us because we're on video. They're used to seeing our face. They're used to hearing our voice they are just that much more of a warm prospect. Um, and one other thing I would point out here is um, that their videos on average run about 100 views. So just a reminder, we don't need to go viral um, in order to get value out of our videos. We're running businesses where getting 30 clients quickly you know, uh, off of a really important video would be game changing for a lot of individual advisors. So um, don't be discouraged if your videos similarly have less than 100 count. It might be the case and it can still not 
or it doesn't necessarily match to quality. If all of those are quality views, real views, um, there's a lot of business results behind that kind of um, audience size. And I yeah. think um, we in the boot in the boot camp that FICOM, that we're doing with FICOM, I'm sure we'll cover this. There are a lot of different goals that you can have with video. So I would say the first goal is just creating your first video, and it could be just um, a get to know, you know, something like that one that was on the homepage of a website, just talking about who you serve, why you serve, why you do what you do, and something that that you could use on your about us page or on your homepage. And then, you know, you can branch into maybe an educational series on a particular topic. You know, this person has been doing it for a long time and they've got their whiteboard. Yes. Just don't be intimidated by some of these examples. Just doing you know, one every time there's something timely in the market. I mean, you can come up with sort of, I'm going to, I'm going to do one a month on X, Y, Z, or I'm going to do a couple educational on this. Having a strategy will make this seem, I think, less um, intimidating. And I, the only thing I wanted to point out was um, a lot of people have asked about like thumbnails and things. So the thumbnail is just a visual you see here, these little squares. And you'll notice that, you know, these thumbnails down here, um, are a little bit harder to tell what the video is about when you just look at them. You have to still read the text underneath. Whereas now this new strategy um, that they have, which I would suggest you do, is that you have a text overlay on the image that tells you what the video is about. So this is going to allow people who are stumbling across your video quickly and easily tell what it's about without needing to read the tiny text underneath. Hmm. I think okay. Yeah, keep going. You're running the train. Go. Yes, now. I know we're running really close on time. So one other one I just wanted to I wanted to point out, and I know you ladies um, said he was part of one of your um, boot camps as well. Is John here? And I the reason I love him is that he has a niche of helping people who are retiring from the railroad. I get questions all the time: How small is too small of a niche? This is a great example that, you know, he has 5,000 subscribers to a YouTube channel and he only works with people who are retiring from the railroad. So this is a, just a fantastic example. And his videos are not super high production value, but he's answering questions that people have. And his videos get shared with that in that community so much. He's actually going to be joining me in January. So keep your eyes open for that. I'm going to invite him to talk about all things YouTube. So I see tons of questions coming in on YouTube. We don't have time to do a deep dive in YouTube today, but keep your eyes peeled from an email from us. We will invite you to that in January to learn all about how he's grown his channel on YouTube. Okay. Do we want to talk about the boot camp since we're running out of time? Yeah, let's talk about the boot camp. We are so excited. We are running a video workshop for FMG advisors exclusively. So if you want to learn how to create really high impact videos, this is a very ex experiential workshop. You'll create five videos. We'll give gears, checklists. You'll learn how to script like a pro. You'll film videos all day long. You'll get coaching. You'll be in a peer cohort. It's really fun. It's really Really exciting. You end the day tired but fulfilled, and you'll take on a 30 day challenge to begin implementing video in your business straight away and leveraging the FMG platform. We couldn't be more excited for it. We've got the link in the comments there. So, FMG just dropped it in, and there is a code that you can use to get 10% off. What is it, Carolyn? Do we have it? FMG Insider. FMG. And so, and so you'll be with advice. It is virtual. It's one day. You'll make a video even before we start the workshop. So you'll kind of have that baseline of what it's starting, what it looked like. And then at the end of the day, you'll be in an entirely different place. So it's really an opportunity to apply everything that we have been covering today in real time and find out what works for you with expert coaching and peer accountability and feedback. It's one of my favorite workshops to run because it's really fulfilling. And when I'm out in traveling at events, I often have advisors come up to me and they say, I'm a video rock star, which means they simply completed the bootcamp. So come be an FMG video rock star. And we will be sending out e an email with information on this too. You don't have to be quickly typing everything up, but I believe, you know, to make these most effective, we are going to keep the cohort re relatively small. I think, did we decide 20 or 25? 24. 24. <laughs> um, and based on the success, you know, we'll just 
offer more and more. So, um, you know, and at, since we, you know, are on that topic, I'm going to keep this up here for just a second, but I do want to show, cause we're getting a lot of questions about using video within FMG, which I love. So for all of you who are, um, FMG, uh, customers, I'm going to say this because we're going to, you know, send out the replay too. So this will be at the end here. Just, it takes me one second to show you. We actually have a brand new feature that, um, I think you are all going to love. So if you go into your FMG account now, you can now incredibly easy add a video to any page of your website just by copying and pasting the URL. So yeah. you still want to upload it to a hosting platform like a YouTube, for instance, but let me just show you how simple this is. So if I take, um, where was that one of, did we have the meat? Um, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll just hold, I'll just put this one in here. So we're going to pick the video we want. Here's the video is buy and hold investing dead. We're going to copy the link. So you see up here, everybody, I'm just copying the link that that is at. And then in my FMG account, I'm just on a page of, of my website here. And this is a demo uh, website, obviously. You're going to click into the section that you want to edit. And then you see here this little icon that says insert video. I'm sorry, it's kind of small right here. I have my view set to small, but you're just going to click that button and then you're going to pop the video in. And this video title is just going to tell people what the video is all about. So it's going to, you know, it's important for both SEO, but also for accessibility for, you know, people viewing it who might be um, visually impaired. So I just copy and paste usually what the, the YouTube um, channel description is. I'll take that part two out and then I'm going to hit OK and look at that. I mean, could not be any easier to add video. And you can see it's already, since I chose this module here where we have a picture on the left and text on the right, it centered the video to the right. However, if I were to add, you know, a new section right here where I want it to be um, a different layout, it would format to that section. So it's gonna make it incredibly, incredibly easy to make sure your videos are formatted correctly. I also saw another question about compliance and I just wanna point out one other thing. If you were um, to go into FMG's library, obviously we work with compliance departments across all of the broker dealers, almost all, I don't think I could say all, but almost all. Um, one of the things is that we have all this content in here and your compliance team, if they're used to working with FMG, is used to our content and approving it and what that looks like. You can come in here and take one of these pieces of content and use it as the basis for a video that you want to use or talk about, right? Like turn it into your script, which can make it a lot easier from a compliance perspective to get it approved. So you can come in here to like current events. Um, we could say this October CPI. We could you know, oh, this is just a social post, so that's not long enough. But if I looked at an, the email version of it, um, you know, I could take it and turn it into my script, my talking points, send it off to compliance as the script. So this can also give you just ideas, though, if you want things to talk about, um, use this library that way as well. And I'd also, you know, when you load it to your website, it will also automatically make it mobile responsive. Yes which is awesome. But I do, I also, you know, I love your suggestion. Content idea, FMG's content library is, 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 you know, it has many benefits, but one is just for ideas and you just, you know, take something that we've done and, and then make it your own. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the other question I thought that I saw was about um, using the image within the hero banner. Yes. So with, with FMG, if you have a website and you want your the background of your homepage to be a video like look how crisp and clean this looks mm -hmm. this is a video in the the background of the main section you can absolutely do that i would suggest with these though because see how big and full screen they are they can get pixelated really quickly if you're using your own video so you want to make sure that you have a really high quality video this is the one place where shooting it on your phone probably isn't going to cut it um but you can contact our team and we can help you navigate that. So I'm just going to put this up here one more time. I know we had it in the um, notes, but Candice, um, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. Susan, good luck tonight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thanks for being here. If you have any questions, oh, I should put that up. Um, I don't know. As always, we need more time, but just such a great <laughs> I think there could be, I think there could be a, a second version of this. <laughs>
Yeah. Definitely but if you have questions, please email us marketing at suite.com. And thanks everybody. Have a great rest of the week. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.